Oh hey, it's me, Slug Dog. I hit top 10 playing Yarick in solo queue, and actually, that's a prank. I actually hit rank 5 since I started working on this video. Uh, cool, I guess. Today, I'm going to teach you guys how I got to this rank and separated myself from other challenger players with my different playstyle. I'll show you guys how I climbed with arguably one of the most exploitable champions in the game and how I made Yorick into a 1v9 demon femboy beast chaser god king pressure lord. I don't know what that means. In this video, I'll be talking about what makes me so good, how to improve to get to this kind of position, but also give you like a formula, a kind of base to get better. I just want to say that firstly, almost all this information I'm going to say is universal. I'm just going to be using Yarik as an example because that's the champion I played to get to this rank and it's obviously the champion I'm the most skilled on so I can give better examples. But you could literally do this with any other champion and the same ideas would apply. With that being said, let's get started. Runes and items, a lot of people ask about them and I find it quite silly because it's really easy to just look up the best play of any champion. Like if I type best GP in the world or Fiora world and I can copy their setups, you know, the rank 1 player's setups. It's even better if you can watch the gameplay of them and figure out why they do that setup and how to use it efficiently. But if you really struggle finding players to just copy, I highly recommend using OneTricks.gg, OPGG or any of the weird statistics websites and copy whatever challenger or grandmaster main of the champion you're playing is doing. For me, it's a bit different, you see, this is gonna be a bit mean, but I'm just gonna be honest. There's like no other challenger Yarek player. I think that the only other Yarek player that is as like good as me or at like at least can hold a candle is Chulik, a Korean Yarik. And he's been on his fucking maple story grind. I respect the screw League of Legends, but you know, that doesn't help me because now I have to invent my own shit. I mean I've always invented my own shit. I have a very high mastery of the champion, so I understand what makes my champion work and whatnot. I create setups that optimize for myself, and that's something you can do once you get more experience in a champion. But if you just have no idea where to start, willy-nilly, you can just copy a really good player like me. And that being said, right now, I only seriously go two runes. I use Arcane Comet with this specific rune page. Very, very important. I will discuss it in another video because this isn't a video about fucking runes and items. This is a video about me telling you how to play the damn game. And the second rune page is Conquer Resolve, which I go against specifically hard matchups like maybe Aurelia or Darius who are a bit tanky, Zack, these champions are really tanky so you want to get into long fights with them. Comet is what I go in 90% of the time and I've gone it since the first strike nerfs. And the change of cutdown is actually makes this rune incredibly broken. Cutdown, Scorch, Comet all combine to do an obscene amount of poke damage making it really easy to push enemies out of lane. With my main build being Lethality 95% of the time, Comet synergizes with the burst. Yeah, with my main build being Lethality 95% of the time, Comet synergizes with the burst poke amazingly and scales into the late game, creating scenarios where you can almost one shot enemies from 1e. Comet is a big reason of my playstyle on High Elo and why I'm succeeding right now, and I'll explain it into much detail in another video. But I do want to emphasize now that knowing these rune differences between Conquer and Comet, Comet is for poke, Conquer is for long fights, Grass is for if you're an idiot. These gameplay patterns are absolutely important to know. Let's quickly go into itemization. I go Lethality, I play in a very burst assassin way, and although it is incredibly squishy and I can just die in literally one CC, it allows me to punish enemies with death if they make even a single mistake. I enjoy the kill or be killed playstyle, and because I enjoy it a lot, it gives me the motivation to keep on playing, and even through the difficulty in piloting it with the positioning being incredibly hard, Yarx E being one of the weirdest skill shots in the game, as well as having to manage ghouls, when you gain mastery of it, when you do something that just pop off play, when you improve at these kind of stuff, you start to realize that the build is not only fun, but straight up broken, and can make you feel like the biggest piece of shit ever, and god do I love feeling like a piece of shit. I've gone around the same, I've gone the same build of a fellow to Yarek for about like a year now I think. Uh, yeah, I haven't really changed it. Anyways, let's talk about the actual important stuff. The playstyle. Even though I just talked about itemization and runes for honestly way too long, it's around a thousand times more important to watch gameplay and also analyze your gameplay and just 
you know, focus really tight onto that. It doesn't matter if you have the best runes or setups, if you can't play the game well, if you don't know how to position, if you don't know how to micro mechanics, beat people in a 1v1, then what's even the point? I'm going to show you guys what I do to win my lands and carry games. You may notice I've already gone really large win streaks and overall have an over 60% win rate on Yarrick, with almost all of them being challenger lobbies. This is because of a few traits that I have, and the defining part that makes me able to win over 10% of the games that I usually should. The first thing that makes me really, really obnoxious to play against for any other player is my ability to win almost every single matchup in the game. Yes, any matchup. I rally a Jax, Fiora, Trinity, throw every horrific matchup at me, and I, I can deal with it. These would destroy any average Yark player, but because I'm an insane person, because I've been through the ringer, I've gone through more trauma and ass beatings any other Yark player could ever experience. Through this pain, I've learnt every matchup. Yes, guys, be a masochist. Wallow yourself along the pain. Okay, this isn't an encouragement to do self-harm. Um, anyways, I personally just play a lot. I'm only good at the really hard matchups because I've learned the habits of how certain matchups go, how they generally play out from just jamming my head into the wall, playing them over and over again in solo queue. You could definitely be a good player playing only a few games a week, I'm sure of that, but you would improve a lot more gaining experience of more games. Honestly, I find it really hard to explain matchups because a lot of the matchups that I play are very instinctive and very habitual. But there are some small stuff that you don't necessarily need to get experience in the game to kind of get better at. You can also study up and look at champions' abilities or kits. For example, recently I looked at Aurora's kit and what the fuck. The second thing that makes me a special little pookie wookie is my adaptability. I think ironically the biggest strength and difference between me and every other Yari player is just the ability to give up slip pushing or opt for another strategy. One of the most commonly echoed kind of mentality of Yarrick is to perma split and try to force your head through the enemy on the side lane. And although it works out sometimes, especially if nobody can deal with you, I very commonly go for flanks from the side lane or help my team in skirmishes or team fights. I straight up sometimes leave towers on the side lane just to steal the enemy's farm. There are so many options in League and just better plays to do, and although Yarrick is a great slip pusher, his strongest trait is the fact that he's a really good assassin and amazing at objective taking as well as catching people out. I know when to give up trying to solo kill a full tank armor stacking on, and to instead go for kills with my team. Remember, the entire map is a canvas, you can paint anything you want. The third thing that makes me really good are my mechanics. Wait, hold the door, Yarrick has no mechanics! His E is a skill shot and that's it, nothing else takes skill. And I just want to say that if you think in that way, please stop eating nuclear fission material. League is fundamentally a mechanics based game. Dodging HL cues, mod cues, spacing out Fiora cues, dodging enemy skill shots as a champion that's going full lethality with no survivability, no tankiness, no mobility can be one of the most difficult things to do. It's not easy to try outplay these champions with almost nothing to work with, it's just, with just only damage. I've always noticed it as a huge difference between low level Yara gameplay and my gameplay, but I can't stress this enough. Tunnel on yourself, very much focus on your positioning and the way you die. But also at the same time, if you're not confident, if you're not sure if you can do something, take as many risks as you can. If there's even a tiny bit, an ounce, a 0.1% of a thought of, this is potentially possible, go for it, what do you lose? 3 LP, 1 death in a game, that means nothing. Get these limit testing plays, exceed yourself. Now, onto the final tip that makes me really good at League. I am untiltable. To be good at Yarrick, you have to become Yarrick. Go bold, speak in tongues. Those who taunt and speak words of nothingness deserve naught of your attention. Become so focused and immersed upon the game that nothing affects you. If you have nothing nice to say, don't say it. In-game chat for me is either turned off or rarely used at all. This is because anyone who uses League Chat are stupid dumbasses or birds. And do you really want to interact with birds? With that being said, that's my big general tips for improving ranks. 
This isn't necessarily anything groundbreaking, but League is a game where if you learn anything at all, it becomes a bit of information that you can store in your head and it will help in the future. I'll wrap it up again. Learn your matchups. Remember to adapt to the game. Don't try to be stubborn and forcing something to work out. Use the entire map to your advantage. Go for limit testing plays, and if you ever get tilted, take a break, take a chill pill, take a nap, jerk off. I highly recommend doing all of them at the same time. Anyways guys, if you focus on all of these at the same time, it's just gonna be overwhelming. Try to go one at a time. Try to, okay, today, this game, I'm gonna try focus on winning lane. Okay, this game, I'm gonna try go for as many aggressive plays as possible. Once you can do that and then combine them all together, your Yarrick will improve a thousand times. With that being said, ask me any questions in the comments. Also, I do want to say, please keep like weird comments to yourselves. I've been getting a lot of like weird transphobic, homophobic, uh, Yarrick phobic, uh, bird comments. Like, come on, can we keep the bird comments down? No more fucking birds, please, I beg of you. There's no, I really hate birds. But yeah, ask me anything. And also, have a great day, everyone. Um, I'll be making a video and comment because comments are really overpowered, I think, right now. And have a good day, guys. Love you. Uh, only some of you, though. Oh, yeah, guys. I lost literally all the games I, like, used in the gameplay footage in this video. And on according to OPGG, I was the ace, the best performing player on my team, and all the games were team disparity. So my final tip is, even if you play like an absolute demon, sometimes Riot just curses you with four dog horses on your team and um, uh, the most you can do is still perform as best as you can. Anyways, I'm fucking cold. I'm done with this video. I'm see you later guys.